Webheads, today I'll be discussing some of the Marvel books that are getting ready to come out in July. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic the Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, I'm going to be discussing with you some of the Marvel comic books that are getting ready to come out in July. That's right, the solicitations were dropped, and uh, I think there's some exciting books worth mentioning here, and we're going to share them with you. Now, you're probably wondering, uh, yeah, Mike Spider Slayer, why are you doing this from your bed? Well, I did have a medical procedure done um, yesterday, which was Friday, and uh, I figured, you know what, the show must go on. So I'm going to share with you some of these books I'm looking forward to. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this. Now if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell. And if you want to be entered into the Road to 10K X-Men giveaway, guys, make sure you leave a comment sometime during this video. Alright, so let's get started. All right, guys, so these solicits are from CBR.com. That's where I got all this particular information from. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. And let's see what we have, shall we? All right, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is Marvel Comics Presents Amazing Fantasy. That's right. Check out these covers. efforts. We have some prehistoric guy that's holding like Captain America's shield rescuing some woman from some ogre or whatever it is looks pretty cool right i'm excited about these amazing fantasy comics uh nice second cover here with captain america on it again this is issue one of five written by care andrews and this has all some of your you know classic marvel characters on there it's got red room black widow teenage spider-man world war ii captain america and some of the most iconic versions of your favorite Marvel heroes. So I am looking forward to this. That one's 32 pages and that one is $5. Next is a book that I definitely talked about earlier in the week. I'm very excited about this. This is Sinister War issue one of four. This is that Spider-Man event where Spider-Man has to do battle against some of his notorious villains, but the villains are gonna be doing battles against themselves, having kind of like a civil war. And that's kind of what's been lacking in the Spider-Man comic books, right? Um, the nostalgic villains. We've been spending our whole time building up to flipping Kindred, and uh, all the other characters have been lacking. This one's written by Nick Spencer. Artwork will be done by Mark Bagley, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, this one will be 40 pages, $5. It's also taking place um, in Amazing Spider-Man as well. Check out Sinister War issue two of four. Interesting cover here as well. More of Spider-Man's villains. And then here we have the Amazing Spider-Man cover done by Mark Bagley. And this one is pretty neat with Kindred holding Spider-Man by the web. So that's pretty awesome as well. That's Amazing Spider-Man issue 70. And this is another one here. I think it plays homage to uh, actually a Hobgoblin uh, cover back in Spectacular Spider-Man. But I'm really looking forward towards this Sinister War. This could be the best story that Nick Spencer has written when it's come to the Amazing Spider-Man, but we'll see. That's issue 71, 32 pages, $4. Next is another Spider event that has to deal with the aftermath of King in Black. This is Extreme Carnage. Uh, nice looking cover with Scream and uh, anti or Agent Venom or anti-Agent Venom on there, Flash Thompson. He's making his return back and this will probably make this event worth reading for sure. Love the cover here. Um, this looks like a wraparound cover as well. Extreme Carnage Alpha Issue 1, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, right? And uh, it says, violence runs in the family. So again, this is dealing with the aftermath of King and Black. So this is going to be pretty cool, I think. 40 pages, it's a one shot, it's $5. Then you have some of the other characters, Extreme Carnage, um, Scream. 
So you have this issue, which cover again looks phenomenal. Um, and this one is 32 pages, $4. And then you have, is that page or phage? Is that how you say the name? Um, another beautiful looking cover as well. And here's like another one with some weird graph behind him, but it looks neat. He looks like some kind of, I don't know, dinosaur symbiote. So I think this is a new symbiote, right? If I'm not mistaken. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think we got to see that in, um, in the most recent King and Black tie-in when it comes to Cloak and Dagger, right? If I wasn't mistaken there, is that the new one? I don't know, I'm not 100% sure. Or was that Toxin? So Steve Orlando writes this one. This is another one shot, 32 pages, $4. All right, here's another title that I uh, reported on earlier. I think it was last week. This is X-Men issue one. We get the new roster in here, Sunfire, we have Marvel Girl, we have Cyclops, we have X-23, we have Polaris, Rogue, Sync. Um, I'm excited for this because this could be a new team and they could actually work together and there could be some actual real concrete storytelling that's not scattered all over the place and it could give X-Men direction once again. There's going to be a whole bunch of uh, connecting covers to pay homage to the 1990s X-Men. So I'm excited for that. Jerry Duggan, artist Pepe Larez, and uh, this book is 48 pages, $5. All right, now's another book that I reported on. This is Moon Knight. Uh, this is issue one, getting you hyped up for the TV show that is getting ready to come out. Uh, really nice looking cover here as you get to see Moon Knight taking on some like uh, just some thug in the street who's trying to take advantage of a woman here. Uh, really nice cover there. And then you got this cover here, which we know who that's done by, right? John Ramuda Jr. <laughs> so that one's there. And then you got this one here holding his like little weapons. So that's cool. I'm interested to see like the psyche of Moon Knight here. And hopefully this book really develops the character. So I don't have an idea of what's going on when it comes to uh, the TV show. And then you got this one here. So that's Moon Knight issue one, done by Jed McKay. I'll definitely check it out because he wrote Black Cat and Taskmaster. So that one is 40 pages and that one is $5. All right, so next we have uh, the facim facsimile uh, edition of Werewolf by Night as it introduces the first appearance of Moon Knight. So that could be a lot of cool if you're looking to get some history there by Marvel Comics. That one's a uh, $3.99 price point takes place from 1972. All right, then we have the Amazing Spider-Man Annual, which is the whole Infinite Destiny storyline that's taking place through all these annuals, which I think is a lot of fun. And it's gonna be, I think, the Amazing Spider-Man doing battle against Star because she actually has the Reality Stone. Uh, so this could be a really good event, something different that takes place through the Marvel Universe and all annuals. You know, when it comes to events like these, as long as there's not like a thousand, uh, like say for like, for instance, X-Men, uh, not X-Men, uh, King in Black, I, I don't mind it. Uh, again, this is part four of eight in Infinite Fury, 40 pages, this is $5. This could be a lot of fun. And then you have the continuation of that story in Thor Annual and uh, Infinite Destinies as well. This one's written by Aaron Cooter. Same thing, 40 pages, $5, five of eight when it comes to this Infinite Fury thing. Pretty nice looking cover there as you get to see Thor doing battle uh, there. So I guess they're fighting for the stones, right? Then you have Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads. Now, I've been a fan of Peter David of what he's been doing lately. Um, he's been writing the Symbiote Spider-Man. He's been he's gonna be writing X-Men Legends. He's writing Maestro uh, War and Packs. And all those series are pretty good. Now the last series when it comes to Symbiote Spider-Man wasn't all that great because it was forced to do a King in Black story. So his hands were kind of tied there, right? So this one could be interesting. Got, got Black Cat in there once again. This is issue one of five and it's gonna be Symbiote Spider-Man doing battle against the Hulk, which I wanna see that story happen, right? And it takes place 
right before his Incredible Hulk series. That's what's stated in the description. 40 pages, $5. So next we have uh, the United States of Captain America celebrating 80 years of Captain America. Uh, I don't know if I'll be checking this one out, but it's kind of cool. Not sure who this female Captain America is, uh, but this is issue two of five written by Christopher Cantwell. Um, and it says, Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson are hot on the trail of the shield thief, but their adversary remains one step ahead and he has friends in low places. Some of Captain America's oldest enemies are behind the scheme, but can Sam and Steve figure out who these enemies are and what they want in time to stop them? So I don't know. We'll see what happens here. 40 pages, $5. I'm still on the fence about that one. Now, if you've read um, Immortal Hulk and you followed the uh, Gamma Flight throughout this whole entire time, you might want to check out this particular book. So this is Gamma Flight, issue two of five, written by Al Ewing, who also wrote Immortal Hulk as well. And uh, it says, who is who is after the Gamma Flight? You've been calling for them since Immortal Hulk's early days. Well, true believer, we're here to deliver. Come to Gamma Flight for all the radioactive wonder you have been missing and the characters you love to hate. 32 pages, $4. So you guys are gonna be on board with Gamma Flight? Let me know in the comments below. Next, we have the continuation of Alien. Check out this cover. It's like up in your face. Really looking cool. I think it's an Inhuk Lee variant or Inhuk Lee cover. Here's another one that looks pretty badass. At this point, we're on issue five, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson. I'm not sure if I'm honestly gonna be reading this series that much forward i still have to read issue two like i said i'm a fan but i'm not like a mega fan right and then we have aliens aftermath where we get to see this alien here that looks like he's a ghost because he's all white but this is a one shot it's not an ongoing written by benjamin percy and this one if you're interested is 40 pages five dollars all right so i'm not a fan of this this is ultraman the trials of ultraman He's surrounded by all kinds of people all over the place. Don't know what's going on. Don't think I'll be reading that. And then we have another cover here where it has like the creature from the Black Lagoon or whatever it's called. That's weird. I'm not, I'm not checking that out. Here's another book that I stopped reading, but you can't deny the awesome covers. This is Carnage, Black, White, and Blood. This is issue four. There's no purpose for me to read this anthology book, um, but it's just cool covers man you can't you can't beat that one all right now here would be a cover by alone i think this is actually kind of cool this is shang chi this is issue three where it looks like he's getting ready to do battle against wolverine you get to see the claws uh right up in his face but then in his in his little gauntlet there you see the reflection of wolverine look how detailed his face is and i'm not gonna lie shang chi looks like he's kind of shitting in his pants a little bit there so that's really cool 32 pages four dollars so again speaking of peter david we have x-men legends right um at this point we are on issue five i think yes issue five and this is really neat as it's a puzzle you know all in different pieces and it's being put together and i think the cover is done by todd nuck here uh that is really awesome and the team consists of Peter David's team, which has Polaris, Hob Havoc, Wolfsbane, Strong Guy, Quicksilver, Madrex, the Multiple Man, Val Cooper, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. 32 pages, $4. All right, so continuing with the X books, we have X Corp. This is issue three. I don't know, man. I think I'm going to check out issue one, but this doesn't really excite me. This is, there's just too many X books. This one's done by Teeny Howard. 32 pages, $4. Way of X is the next one. At this point, we're going to be on issue four. And I wasn't a fan of the first issue. I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem to fit my style. I think this book has potential, but it's just people die just to die in this book just so they can resurrect them. And Nightcrawler just doesn't have um, 
I don't know. He just doesn't believe in the whole situation. And you get to see Magneto doing the initiation with some weird mutant in that first issue. And it's just, it just really wasn't for me. I thought it was kind of boring. It's done by C uh, Cy Spurrier. So we'll see what happens if I continue it going forward. Guys, either ever eat at Andy's ice cream? It's actually really good. <laughs> All right. Next one is a book that I'm probably going to drop. Uh, if it's, I might give it up to issue three, but issue one and two were actually almost the same thing. This is Children of the Atom. Um, we don't know if these kids are mutants or not. We don't think they are because they don't, they can't step through the uh, Krakoan portal. This one's done by Vita Aliala. I, don't, I can never say her name, right? Covers done by RB Sylvia. We do have a new artist on the book, is Paco Mandina. So we'll see what happens with this book, but none of these characters, like, they don't interest me. And they're just, they seem like they're rip-offs. Like, who's Nighty Nightcrawler? Like, who calls themselves that? It's ridiculous. Here's a pretty good book that doesn't seem like it's been out for a while. This is Hellions, right? So we have that one, and then we have um, this other cover here, which is absolutely gorgeous. They did like a, a row cover of this recently, but this is Hellions issue 13, and it has all the different like versions of Psylocke on here, and that is a great cover. You can really look at that cover for quite a while. This one's written by Zeb Wells, um, but it, I haven't read this in so long. Uh, no, Hellions I read in so long. The next one that... I don't want to read is sword and it always seems to connect to some kind of event like marvel is being slick about this they're like how can we keep sword alive oh let's keep it you know with with king in black let's keep keep it with uh the the gala event now we're gonna keep it with the last annihilation this is issue seven written by al ewing valero Schitty. It uh, does the artwork on here. I'm not a fan of this book. I'm not a fan of the characters in it. So I don't know. We'll see. Wolverine, issue 14. Another X title that's been hot and cold for me. We'll see what this book has to offer. Benjamin Percy is the writer. Who's a great writer, but one time you're doing with Maverick. The other time you're doing with, with freaking vampires. And then it's got to tie into an event. It never gains any momentum when it comes to it. So that's how it suffers there. 32 pages, four bucks. X-Force is a pretty solid book. The artwork has kind of do uh, gone downhill a little bit for me. But I like how Quentin Quire has grown as a character in this series. And he's not like some little snotty brat-nosed kid. Um, another book written by Benjamin Percy as well. I say check that one out. New Mutants, no interest in that book. We're on issue 20 at this point. Marauders is another one that's been hot and cold. Love Emma Frost on there, I can say that, right? This one has to deal with the aftermath of the gala as well. Jerry Duggan writes this particular book, and that's why this scares me a little bit when it comes to um, the X-Men issue one. Excuse me, getting a drink. Obviously because Marauders has been hot and cold, X-Force has been hot and cold, so I don't know, but I'm hoping that Benjamin Percy has a story that's going to intrigue you when it comes to that new X-Men ta uh, title. Next, we have Excalibur, which is another book I don't read, so we're going to pass on that one. Spider-Woman is a good book, and it looks like she's going against battle here against Lady Bullseye, which I think could be a lot of fun. She's back at home. She's interacting with her family. She's got friends at home like Captain Marvel, which could be a lot of fun as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Carla Pacheco is the actual, <clears throat> excuse me, writer of this one. And it always has a ton of action. So I definitely recommend this book. All right. Here is like the cover of the day for me, man. Black Cat. Look at that. She's holding... The Infinity Gauntlet. Out of anybody here, would you ever think that she would possess that power? Why does she have that power? I'm so curious. And then we have this Peach Momoko variant, right? Man, but that cover right here, this one, is done by Pepe Larez. So good. So awesome. Oh, God, I can't wait to read that book. It's going to be great. So, 
And that one is 32 pages, $4. Miles Morales, Spider-Man. So Solomon Ahmed does the series for this one. And this is the Clone Saga Cataclysmic Conclusion. So how does this whole thing affect Miles Morales? What are the ramifications of it? How does it progress the character going forward? If it does at all, I guess it's still yet to be determined. Are you guys going to be reading this Clone Saga book? This one is 32 pages, $4. All right. Next is Spider-Man Spider Shadow. This is issue four of five. First issue was phenomenal. Seeing Peter go down that dark rabbit hole was quite interesting. Can't wait to see how he goes deeper and becoming more evil with the Venom symbiote. I think that's going to be great. 32 pages, $4. Check out this cover with nonstop Spider-Man. The dude's falling from a plane. Like, where's he going to land, right? That's kind of cool. The second issue was better than the first issue. At this point, we're on issue five. Joe Kelly is the writer. Chris Bocciolo is the artist here. And it says, okay, so we haven't been 100% honest with you. No, we still won't be stopping. No, it's still about Spider-Man and the biggest, craziest fight of his life. It's just, there's something we've been teasing you along with that is really a trick on both and you and Spider-Man. That, well, you're just going to have to read the issue. <laughs> 32 pages, $4. All right, next is Avengers issue 46. I talked about this one earlier last week, I think, and it comes to World War She-Hulk. This leads up into issue 50, and then there's something else that's going forward that's launching Avengers into 2022 that's supposed to be the event of the year when it comes to Avengers. I don't know, man. I think Jason Aaron is the wrong writer for Avengers. We need a new Avengers writer. We'll see what happens with that. 40 pages, five bucks. Next is Captain Marvel. This is issue 30. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice looking cover as we get to see Carol here in all different versions of herself. Uh, pretty interesting. She's got new powers. I don't know what's going on with her going forward, but we'll see. And I think Kelly Thompson, the one thing she's done is she's given Captain Marvel a lot of different types of status quos, power upgrades, all kinds of different things. She's been de dating Stephen Strange now. So I don't know, we'll see where she's up to at this point. All right, next we have Iron Man. This is issue 10. Really nice looking cover here by Alex Ross. And Tony Stark's been thrusting in some other world. We don't even know where he's at. He wasn't even in the last issue. He was basically focused with Patsy Walker in the book, which I thought was kind of cool with the other sidekicks trying to stop Korvac. Iron Man has been good. A lot of people have wrote it off after like the first and second issue, but it has definitely gotten better and I've really enjoyed it. So that's 32 pages, $4. Fantastic Four, this is issue 34, written by Dan Slott. I've recently jumped on this book once again. Um, you know, Dan Slott, not my favorite writer, but I do find this book entertaining and the artwork is pretty good and Dr. Doom is getting married to that V character. like. That's just weird to me. Like there's been no buildup to that and all of a sudden he's just getting married. I don't know, something doesn't seem right to me with that one, but we'll see what happens with that. Here's a very underrated book. This is Black Widow, this is issue nine. Kelly Thompson writes it and the first story arc was amazing with Black Widow basically not knowing who she was. Her, her mind got swiped. An arcade was under the whole thing. She had some fake family and then they wind up getting destroyed. She remembers who she is. And now basically we're getting ready to start a new story arc at this point. So I don't really know what's going on by the time we get to issue nine, but the artwork has been absolutely outstanding. I definitely say pick up Black Widow. You're not gonna be disappointed. Best Kelly Thompson book. Well, here's a book I'm definitely skipping, The Eternals. For me, this book is just absolutely boring. Even Thanos can't get me into this book. And this cover's just weird. I don't, I don't like these headshot covers. Just off for me, right? All right. Here is the best Avengers book there is right now. This is Avengers. This is Mech Strike. Uh, we're at the conclusion of this series. 
Kane the Conqueror behind everything when it comes to this. Jed McKay is the writer of this book. And uh, they're in these big, gigantic mechs trying to stop Kane the Conqueror. It's been a lot of fun. The characters are in character in here. Great book. Not overpriced. 32 pages, $4. Here's another book I'm not reading. No interest in it. The Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade. Pretty nice looking cover, though. I can give it that. Here's a book that you might be interested in if you're into cosmic events. This is The Last Annihilation, Guardians of the Galaxy. Who will annihilate them all? And you can see all our characters here on the cover as well. I think they could bring back Darkhawk um, through this event. I'm excited. And did you guys actually read that book? I, I thought that one was actually cool. This takes place in Guardians of the Galaxy, issue 16. Al Ewing is the writer. This book's not overly priced either. 32 pages, $4. Most of these books are $4, so Marvel is holding that line. The next one we're going to be talking about is Better Ray Bill. This is issue 5 of 5. Um, the first issue of this that I read was awesome. Better Ray Bill just very frustrated that he doesn't get any of the credit because he always plays second fiddle to Thor. His hammer got broken, so he's looking to go to Odin to find a new weapon. Now, based off of this cover, is this sword his new weapon? I don't know. We'll see. But this is an interesting book by Daniel Warren Johnson, who also did the Wonder Woman Black Label series and also did Murder Falcon. So you might want to check that one out. Here's a little kid's book, Thor and Loki Double Trouble. So if you have children and you want them to read a book, that's, you know, for kids. You might want to check that out. But then you got the main book here. We have Thor, right? Check out these covers, man. They look great. Thor issue 15 written by Donnie Cates. The whole Donald Blake situation just got uh, resolved. Man, that's so good, right? And we'll see what happens there. Um, and here it says, The wounds of Donald Blake have not yet yielded, and the new hell is at foot. Within the inhabitants back in Asgard and Odin's presence returned after being away so long, an air of tension now sits upon the throne. Father and son, all father and all father, Odin and Thor. Is this relationship forever doomed? And what does it mean for the Ten Realms? Join Donnie Cates and guest artist Mikhail Bendini, who wrote King in Black or was in King in Black, and Spider-Man for the start of Midgard shaking new arc revelations. There seriously has not been a Thor book that I have not liked from Donny Cates, and I can't wait for this new story arc. And then we have America Chavez, um, which actually, from what I heard, has been a really good issue. I did, or series, I did read the first issue. It wasn't bad, but it's just something that I don't need to read right now. This is issue four of five. But I want to know in the comments below who is going to be reading Reptil. This is the next generation superhero or next gen Spider-Man like character. If this book sells, you never know. They could make an ongoing. I remember this character. He was like in Avengers Academy or something like that. I might check out the first issue just to see what it's about. Terry Blass is the writer and Nid Balam is the artist here. So I don't know. We'll see. The Mighty Valkyries is the next book we'll be talking about. Now, I, I bought the first issue, have not read the first issue, but the artwork inside this book is phenomenal. I mean, just the artwork in alone is worth the buy when it comes to that particular book. Look at Hella in this cover. I definitely say check this out just for the artwork and you might like the story. So Jason Aaron writes this particular book and he should just stay on Thor. Don't write Avengers, right? <laughs> and then here's another book that I don't read, but my friends from Comic Book Weekly do. It's the live stream that um, I do on the channel every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Really a lot of fun. You guys should check it out um, at that time or watch the replay of it. Or you can check us out on the audio version on iTunes or Spotify. Just look up Comic Book Weekly and you can listen to it. But this is Runaways issue 37 done by Rainbow Rowell. Uh, and uh, I heard it's pretty good, but it's just not my cup of tea. Next, we have Champions. This is done by Danny Laura. Nice looking cover, I can give you that. It's like a video game on your smartphone or some kind of icons on your smartphones, right? But 
I have the most recent issue of this, but I'm just not into it as they're still doing Cradle, 32 pages, $4. All right, next we have the Immortal Hulk. This is issue 48. Nice looking cover there, man. That That is awesome, right? As you get to see Betty Ross as she's, um, oh, what, is she, what does she call herself? The Red Harpy. So yeah, that's pretty neat. I think that's awesome. Definitely check out Immortal Hulk. There's only two more issues after this. And can you believe it? Dao Al Ewing's run will be done. Where does Immortal Hulk go from here, right? So 32 pages, $4. Savage Avengers is the next book. This is issue 22. I heard Jerry Duggan does do a good job with this book. I never checked it out because it's characters I just don't normally like. And so that's why I've had no interest in it. But if you like it, go ahead, check it out. That's also 32 pages, $4. And then we have Daredevil here, which has been a phenomenal series by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, definitely always recommend it. I love the Easter eggs in this in this cover, as you get to see like Daredevil, Kingpin, the Agents of Shield emblem there. Uh, we get to see Bullseye, Daily Bugle, Citywide Homicide continues. Really awesome. Um, most recent issue, you get to see Electra trying to train some young girl to maybe be like her sidekick. And I think that's pretty awesome. And Matt Murdock still being in jail. So yeah, this book is 32 pages and this one is $4. All right, and then next is a series I don't read and don't have any interest in reading. Conan the Barbarian. A couple of nice looking covers though, as you can see here. This one's written by Jim Zub. Now, here's a big question for you. Star Wars, The High Republic. Remember all the spec from issue one? Yeah, where'd, that, where'd all that talk go now? Are any of you guys reading this particular book at all? I'm not. I'm dropping it. It's a bore fest. I have that first issue. If it's worth anything, that's a bonus, right? Star Wars The High Republic issue 7. But when it comes to Star Wars, this is something that you're going to want to read. Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. Um, this takes place through all of the Star Wars books as Boba Fett makes his trip to Boba's palace. Uh excuse me, Jabba's Palace, to deliver the Han Solo cap, uh, Carbonite. That's going to be an interesting story, right? So you got that first cover that has Jabba, Boba, the Carbonite, Slave One. Really cool. And then you have this one with Bosk, the action figure variant, which is so cool. Love that bounty hunter, you know? And then you have uh, Jabba the Hutt. That's a nice looking cover with Boba protecting Jabba there. So, and that one is 40 pages, $5, one shot. Then you got War of the Bounty Hunters, Star Wars, which we need a solid story in the Star Wars book itself. It's been pretty lackluster in my opinion. So that's issue 15 written by Charles Soule. And that one's 32 pages, $4. Then we have it taking place in Dr. Afra. Alyssa Wong writes that one. That's in issue 12, 32 pages, $4. And then, of course, <laughs> this is funny. Star Wars, War of the Bounty Hunters. Bounty Hunters. Issue 14. Ethan Sachs writes that one. And then you have one that takes place in Darth Vader, which is kind of cool. And then that's it when it comes to the comics. So I'm going to show you a couple omnibuses that you might want to check out. So you got Excalibur Omnibus Volume 2. Um, you got the Davis cover. That one goes for a low price of $125. And then you have this one, which is the Madarena cover. So that's $125 also. If you're a fan of Captain Britain, you got that Omnibus coming out as well. So that's kind of cool too, 125. That I like this one better. That's a pretty cool on the bus right there. And then you have Ultimate Spider-Man, which is coming out. But out of the two covers, I would get this one. Now that's sweet. I love the purple sides to it and then Venom in the background. So that's pretty cool. And that's 125. Savage Sword of Conan's coming out. 125 so you have that and then you have this one though uh marvel masterworks the amazing spider-man volume 23 
Uh, this is a cool one. I might actually get this one as this one collects Amazing Spider-Man issues 238 through 251 in annual number 17. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man 1976, number 85 in the official Marvel tryout book. 472 pages for 100 bucks. So that's pretty neat. And then you have Spider-Man Life Story. If you guys have not checked out this book from Chip Zdarsky, buy this. This is definitely worth the price that you're paying for it. Um, it ages in real time when it comes to Peter Parker. 240 pages for $35. Cannot deny the price for that. And there you guys have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video of me showing off all the Marvel comic books that are coming out in July. I had a blast actually bringing it to you. Now I know what to expect and there's some great stuff coming out in July. So I'm excited. So I want to know guys in the comments below, honestly, what are the things you're most looking forward to? And yes, you could get entered into that Road to 10K X-Men giveaway. And guys, if you like this video, once again, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell. And guys, I'm going to do more content right here to check out. Thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Enjoy those books, guys. Take care. Bye.